Some of you have been like, well, Pastor, I started down that road, but I'm still in sorrow. Well, I'm not going to address why you're there. I've already done most of that this morning. But I want to tell you, the pain you're feeling is nothing compared to the joy that's coming if you'll just start doing it God's way. I just want to encourage you that the pain you're feeling is nothing compared to the joy that's coming if you'll just start doing it God's way. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Romans 8.18 says, For I reckon... See the good hillbilly right there. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, not worthy to be compared. See, the devil always wants you to compare. Doesn't he? Oh, man. I'm going through things. I'm going to compare it. God says, I'll just settle it for you right now. My way is the best way and nothing can compare to what I've got in store for you. He said, I'll just settle it up right now. Quit trying to compare it because nothing's going to compare to what's coming. Isn't that good? Boy, if you believed it, some of you would be, you'd be shifted this morning. Be prepared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Look at your neighbor and say, He's wanting to reveal it in me. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hunter, let's not pull that off first. Time. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I've always found. That the, and this is not, not nothing to do with poor little Hunter. But this morning, there's all kinds of distractions popping up left and right. Now, I've always found before a breakthrough, they come in over and over. And a while ago, I almost said, if you're going to use the bathroom, please wait till after service because all those things distract. And the enemy does whatever. Because today, God has something for Broken Change Church. I mean, He has something powerful. Today's the day of breakthrough for Broken Change Church. But I can't, listen, I can't force anybody to do anything. All I can present is the Word of God. Amen? Lord. And this morning I'm presenting with my whole heart because some, sometimes we get so down on things. Life gets so heavy. And we start comparing. Listen, He said the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Do you get that? He didn't say the glory to be real in Pastor Brian. He didn't say the glory. He said in us. That means nothing is going to compare. That no, nothing you're going through is going to compare to the joy and the glory of God that He's going to shine through your life if you'll just do it His way. Come on, are you with me? Nothing's going to come to be compared. It's going to, and he didn't, He's not talking about heaven. He's talking about here on earth right now. Heaven's going to be even more one. Nothing can compare to the glories of heaven. But we don't have to wait to heaven to experience the kingdom of God. It's in us and the glory and the joy of God He wants to flow through us. Amen? Glory. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So, Listen, the whole earth is expecting and waiting for the manifestation to start coming for you and me. I don't know if you're getting this this morning. But all of earth is crying. God said if we won't, the Bible says if we won't worship God, God, even the rocks will cry out. All of earth is waiting for the glory of God to start being revealed through the sons of God and be manifested with the joy and the glory of God. But it only comes when we start doing it when we do it God's way and not our way. And the enemy's always going to tell you what it costs because he doesn't want to realize the blessings. We went over them in detail. And I can promise you that they're true. But don't take my word for it. Start trying them out for yourself. Amen? I mean, we have tons of mission things around here we're doing. But if everyone's heart got wrong, we would have to stop them. And then we would just be like every other dead church. 
not doing the work of the ministry. And I don't believe God wants to bless that. Come on, are you with me? So I just want to encourage you this morning. It's in you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's in me. It's in me. I've got to expect. I've got to expect. 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 <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, 7. I'm trying to go quickly. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You've heard me preach on this many times. But guess what this body is right here? It's an earthen vessel. Where's the treasure that God holds so dear? It's inside you and me. When we may got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, He put a treasure in us. He put something in you that only you can do in this world right here today. But it's only going to be activated when you start really living the blessed life. When you say, I'm all in, I'm not going to keep trying to do it my way. I'm going to do it God's way. Come on. And then that, that treasure's in you no matter what. But to activate it takes a blessed life. It takes saying, it takes obedience. It takes obeying God. It takes doing it His way. Come on, are you with me? This treasure in earth and vessels. Why? Not for our glory. Not so I can say I'm somebody that said the excellency of the power of be of God and not of us. That way the whole world is going to see that God is who He says He is and He can do what He says He can do through our blessed lives. Come on. But if you're saying one thing and doing another and you're still trying to do it your way, you're sending mixed signals and the world is confused because the church has been doing that too long and it's time for the church of God to stand up and walk it out and do it God's way. And then start really walking in the power and the excellency of God and walking with true authority so we can be the church that God's called us to be. We can be the people of God God's called us to be. And they'll look and they'll say, man, they've got a blessed life. I want some of that. And it's not because you don't go any through anything. Look at the next part of this verse. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Notice it didn't say you didn't go through it. But see, when you're doing it God's way, when you're trusting His plans and not your plans, you can I can be troubled on every side, but I know that if I'm following God, I don't have to be distressed because it's not my job to take care of it. It's just my job to follow God. And He's going to lead me. He's going to take care of me. If I had found a broken chain church, we would have crashed years ago. There's been so much opposite. Satan hates broken chains church. Amen. He hates us with a passion. And he hates those that, that get plugged in here because the gospel's working. Amen. And if it had been up to me, it had crashed long ago. But this wasn't my grand idea. It wasn't what I had planned. It's God's plan. That's why time and time again, you see me be troubled on every side. But I've not become distressed. And it says we are perplexed, but not in despair. And you know what? I get perplexed. I don't understand people. I don't understand why people do things they do. And they let the enemy pull them around like puppets. And it perplexes me. But I don't get in despair over it. Because the treasure of God is within me. And I trust His plans for my life. And I know if I'll do it His way, He's going to take care of me. And He's going to accomplish that very thing He started inside me. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Are you with me? So back to our key verse. In quick closing. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and He addeth no sorrow to it. How many have started to get a different revelation of that verse? How many want the blessing of the Lord? And see, He didn't add the sorrow to it. There's power from God if you'll do it His way. If you've been doing it your way, you can repent and turn this morning. 
or you can just decide, or maybe you're just getting more of a revelation for the first time of what it truly means to have a blessed life. And you can say, you know what? I see what Pastor's talking about. I, I, I receive that revelation. And I want to choose to start walking that out. Or maybe you started on the process and somewhere along the way you got started comparing some things and the enemy sucked the fun right out of what you were doing. You know what? You can shift that this morning. Come on, are you with me? See, because I want to encourage you, there's joy for the journey right in the middle of the storm. So many people think joy only comes at the end of the storm. No, joy is most needed right in the middle of the storm. Come on. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Now see, here's the key. Because people that uh, start believing all that sorrow stuff, they stop believing God really wants to bless them. Or that God can bless them. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. And this morning, you got one job. You got to believe that God is who He said He is, and He can do what He said He could do, and that He's way smarter than you, and that His plan, you're going to trust His plans and not your plans. And you're going to repent for trying to treat Him like Burger King. For trying to treat Him to have it your way. Come on. Because then it says that the in believing. Now see, if you believe, what's the next promise here? All he asks is you believe. It says that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. That means that tongue talking, spirit filling, spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is going to come upon you. You're going to feel that electricity course through your veins and you're going to feel something inside you that's been trying to kill you, shake off and break off and you're going to feel the hope of the living God just start welling up inside you and you're going to say you know what, I'm the head and not the tail I'm above and not beneath I'm confidently anticipating God to do what he said he could do and no no gate, no no little imp from hell is going to stop me, nothing's going to discourage me from the blessed life I'm going to have what's been promised to me and I'm going to walk it out in the full inheritance thereof. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I myself also am persuaded of you. I see I'm persuaded this morning and I'm persuaded if you'll swallow this big old message this morning, this big old meat hook, that you're going to experience this very thing this Sunday morning. Amen. But I want to tell you if you walk out and decide it's not for you, then the rest of that verse will come true for you. All those watching too, it goes for you, amen. <laughs> Are you here? Listen, I didn't write the book, and I didn't I didn't concentrate on the curses part, but he set before us choices. Did you notice that? You get to choose. Choose God's way this morning. My brethren, that you are also full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. Now, this is not a popular thing. Boy, the enemy's really struggled this morning. Some of you are just having trouble letting go of doing it your way, which I kind of think that's it. Some of you all wrapped up in defending your choices instead of just letting go and letting God. Amen. Look at your name. you got to love me to get to heaven. Come on. So, does anybody know what admonish means? It means to correct and to steer someone in the right direction. Do you know what happens when you try to uh, steer somebody that has a spirit of rebellion that always wants to do it? Their, see, if you're trying to do it God's way, they won't be offended. If they're trying to really do it God's way and you admonish them, they'll see where they're steering off and they'll quickly correct course and get right back on. But if they're trying to do it your, their way, and they're in rebellion to God's plan, which is rebellion to God's Word. Do you know what happens when you try to admonish them what the Spirit of God says? The hackles on the back of their neck stand up. How dare he try to tell me what to do? I know what's best. And then you, they can't be admonished. And guess what they don't have then? 
They don't have the joy of God. They don't have the peace of God. And they're at home, God, where are you? You said you'd fill me with joy and peace. And he said, well, I've tried. But you keep wanting to do it your way instead of my way. And then I sent Pastor over there to try to give you a little steering. And you, you, you sent him packing too. So now you're choosing the next step, which is to get a spanking. And I don't want to do it. Just do it my way. And you'll have the blessed life. Your life will be rich. And it'll be good. We shouldn't have to spend that much time talking about spankings. We should be talking about how good life is. How rich we are for serving God. And whenever the enemy comes along and tries to compare us, which he will, then we, can, we should be so tender-hearted that we can admonish one another and say, oh, brother, sister, he tried that one on me. Let, don't buy into it. Woo, let me steer you this way because the blessings of God will make you rich. Just hold on a little longer and he's going to see you through to the other side and it's going to be good. Amen. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? But when you're afraid to try to speak in anyone else's life because you don't know how they're going to react, that's already a huge red flag. Come on. See, I believe God wants to break some people out this morning. The worship team's ready. They're going to come back up. They're going to sing Break Every Chain. But I can tell you, I presented the Word of God. I still feel opposition. I can tell you today, you don't want to leave here the same way you came in. And you don't. In the message that God's presented today, I encourage you, don't choose to keep doing it your way because your spanking is on the other side of this message. If you do that today, you move on. On the upswing, I had to say that, is that if you do it God's way, be encouraged that you may feel like you've had all hell coming against you, but the joy's on the other side. Amen. Come on, are you with me? Let me just ask you something. I still feel such a strong opposition this morning, and I'm not taking no for it. They wore my boots today so I can just start on the devil because I've had enough. Amen. You know? Do you really think that Pastor and Joyce having to instruct people about getting spankings and trying to keep from them. Do you think that's the number one thing I want to preach on? No. But what kind of shepherd? I want to, Someday I want to give an account for your soul. And someday, if you're sitting in hell and you say, well, Pastor Brian said I was okay. He preached all this stuff. God's going to hold it to my record and say, hey, chump, we're going to have a talk. And I'm not going to say that. I'm going to be able to look him in the eye and say, God, I did all I could. I preached the whole council. I gave him the truth every Sunday. I presented it to them in such a way that they could understand it. I took the complicated things and I made them simple so that they could break them down they could digest it. God, I encouraged them to follow you. I encouraged them what all promises you had for them. God, I did my very best. And that's what I'm doing. And this morning... If you, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's going to build your faith up so much. No, it won't. I don't feel a thing as full as anointing wise. I feel it on my body. If you notice, I'm doing pretty good this morning. Amen. But I don't feel like a big jumping, shouting revival meeting is about to break out. But I also can tell you that you haven't tapped in yet. Some are just waiting for service to be over. The anointing only happens when we draw upon it. I'm going to preach a little bit more on this. See, when I go to other countries and other churches, you know what they draw on the anointing that God's placed them on? I walk in and it's like, woo! I mean, they're drawn. But sometimes when we're doing it our way, we don't want to draw on something because we might have to change something. And when the anointing comes around, He'll start convicting. And we don't want to hear that. Oh, I'm preaching this morning. He'll start, and he's a gentleman. He doesn't like he comes in with a baseball bat. Come on. He'll come in real gentle and go, hey, he said, can we change this? i got some blessings for you. Can we shift this right here? And then you'll shift it, and then boom. 
This is the glory of God. Because that treasure is already in you. If it's working, it depends on you. Oh, come on. If you're getting this this morning, it'll, the treasure is already in you. The glory and the joy of God, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, it's in there. It may have run out and you may need to recharge. Man, we can lay hands on you this morning. You can be so, so swimming, drunk in the Holy Ghost, you won't know what happened. You can be so free, and then when you walk out of here, you're going to have to step back into life, and you're going to have to start doing it God's way. And you're going to have to start following His plans. And you're going to probably have to fight some battles. And you're probably going to have to stand your ground. And but you're going to not have to do it on your own. You're going to realize you've got the power of God inside you to overcome every obstacle that comes at you. And you're going to, and no matter what comes, even when you're perplexed and distressed, you're going to know you're doing it God's way and you've got the promise that you're going to overcome. No matter what it looks like. Come on, isn't that good this morning? Why not do it His way? I tell you what, I look around the natural, i just be honest, I probably shouldn't say this this morning, but I look around the natural, i say, man, we've got like 12 people here. i got an international speaker coming next week I've known for 20 years. God, what are you doing here? Do you want me to throw in a towel? See, the enemy wants me to believe all stuff. I'm not going there. God promised broken chains, church, great things. I just got to do it His way. All you got to do is do it His way. It doesn't mean I don't become distressed or perplexed. But if I do it God's way, and if I miss it, I'm quick to repent. I didn't say I'm perfect. Come on, are you with me? But are you going to do it God's way? Or are you going to do see when you do, are you doing it your way? When you do it God's way, it comes with promises and assurances. When you do it your way, you'll be worried. Stressed out, full of fear. See, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We all know how do you do it? Because you do it God's way, not your way. Well, I'm preaching this morning. Come on. You get to choose your way or God's way. You say, Well, Pastor, I've been choosing. Well, obviously you've been in a little bit of a battle. Otherwise, I would not be preaching this to the whole church today because we believe in the rain of word around here and we believe that God is speaking to everyone at a different level. It may have been a different part of the message for each one of you, but God spoke to you this morning. I believe that in all my heart. Amen? Glory. Worship team, if you would come worship this morning.